this is the fifth and final part of the preferences to know in Reaper. Next, we're going to scroll down here to the envelope display. And I want to show you this option. Envelope point selection follows time selection for the active envelope. This to me is a great time saver as it makes it easier to select our points when dealing with envelopes. Let's leave it off for now. And let's create an envelope. Let's make these tracks smaller. Let's delete these. Let's create a volume envelope for our drum loop. And let's put it in its own lane. Now let's draw some points, something like that. Now if we want to select a group of these points, it can be difficult to do. But if we use that option in the preferences, envelope point selection follows time selection for the active envelope. All we have to do is create a time selection like this. And it automatically selects all those points. So we can quickly grab it and bring it down a bit here, up a bit here, or delete them right here. It saves a lot of time and it's not on by default. So it's definitely a preference to know. And that's right here. Envelope point selection follows time selection for the active envelope. It's a good one to know. Now, if we keep scrolling down here, we have mouse modifiers. Now, mouse modifiers is a topic in themselves. And I promise I'll get to that really soon, but it's a bit too extensive for this video, but definitely worth going through as we can modify everything we do with a mouse by choosing the context, whether it's left drag, left click, double click, and how it all behaves based on the modifiers we're holding down or where the mouse is placed in the track. But like I said, it's a bit too deep for this video, but I promise I'll get to it really soon. The next option is the MIDI editor, right down here. And if we go over here, we could choose one MIDI editor per item, per track, or per project. And I find this very helpful to choose wisely. If we choose per item, let's get rid of our loop. And instead, let's create some MIDI items. Like this, we'll make three of them. One, two, three. And we'll add some notes by double clicking them and putting some notes in. These will go up. This one, they'll go down. Let's get rid of this one for now. So right now, if we want to edit these, if we double click them, each one of these has its own tab, this one or this one. So we can't just scroll through and see the other one because they're separate. But if we want to treat them at the same time because they're on the same track, we would change it right here to one MIDI editor per track. If we choose that, now if we double click this, we have this one and this one all in the same tab. We can select them both and scroll through and edit both of them in the same window. Second one and the first one. And we could also do that across multiple tracks. Let's make a new track, another item, put some MIDI in it. Go back to our preferences and choose one MIDI editor per project. Let's make this a bit smaller. Now we could choose any of them. Let's select all three. And they're all right here. This is from the other track. This is from the same track. So we could see them all in the same window. And if we choose them, we can then edit them all in the same window as well. Make this a bit smaller. Just select them. And we can edit them all from the same window even if they're on different tracks, because we have one MIDI editor for the whole project. 
And there's a few other behaviors we can go through as well, which are only active when we choose this option. We choose this one or this one, they're grayed out. And finally, under media, there's an option right here that I find really important. Copy imported media to project media directory. If this is not selected, we deselect it here. If this is not selected, let's get rid of this track and this and this. And we drag in a drum loop. The drum loop is in our session, but it's not copied to our project folder. So it's really easy to lose our files if we copy that project folder and bring it to another place or try to back it up because it's still playing or referencing itself from where we dragged it from, which is right here, which could be anywhere on your hard drive, a separate project, an external hard drive. So if we want to keep things organized, make sure we choose Copy Imported Media to Project Media Directory. What that's going to do, when we drag this in, it's going to copy it to the directory for this project. So if we back it up or bring it somewhere else, this drum loop is going to be in that project file or that project folder where that Reaper file is contained, making it much easier to organize your files. It does duplicate file space, but I really recommend keeping all your files for your project in the same folder. So if this is not selected, I really suggest selecting it. So that's it for the most important preferences to know. There's obviously a lot more, but to me, these are the most important ones. And hopefully, it'll make using Reaper a lot easier for you, especially if you're new to Reaper. So anyway, that's the more important Reaper preferences to know. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you.